Bite Size Bible in a Year Chronological Edition for May 8th. We read Psalm 22 through 26. Remember, at the end, I will give you some questions and encouragements, three of them, so you can choose one or do them all so you can apply what you're learning to your everyday, normal, going about your life, life. All right, Psalm 22 is where we started, and Psalm 22 is super cool because it's actually a prophecy about the coming Messiah who is Jesus. They don't know his name yet, but if you read through here, you can see things that happened to Jesus in this psalm. So like verse one, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Jesus said that on the cross. Verse seven and eight says, everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him if the Lord loves him so much. Let the Lord rescue him. That's what they said about Jesus when he was hanging on the cross. In verse 11, we see that he's completely alone and abandoned, just like Jesus. Here is a big one. Uh, la, la, la. Verse 14, my life is poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint, which happens when you're crucified. Your shoulders are out of joint. My heart is like wax melting within me. My strength has dried up like, a, like some baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. Listen to this. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. And none of his bones were broken, but his hands and feet were pierced. Crazy. And this was written before crucifixion even existed. So... What's cool about this is it is a breadcrumb. It's a breadcrumb for us to know who the coming Messiah would be. There are breadcrumbs all through the Old Testament, a ton of prophecies about what would happen to the, to the Messiah, where he would be born, when he would be born, how he would be born, things about him, and this is one of them. So it's just really cool that we can go, you know what, Jesus, thank you that you left breadcrumbs for me so that I don't have to like try to figure out who God is. I mean, God says if we seek him, he will be found. He can be found within the pages of the Old Testament. Isn't that crazy? All right. Then in Psalm 23, listen, I'm just going to tell you this thing right here. You need to get, boy, you need to get this book. Can you see what it's called? Uh, it's very shiny. As Shepherd looks at Psalm 23, oh my gosh, you have to get this. I'm not even going to talk about Psalm 23, and it's my favorite. You have to get this. It goes, it is writing about Psalm 23 a from a guy who used to shepherd sheep. So he goes through every single verse and talks about what they really mean and what they mean about Jesus being our shepherd. Get this book. Do it. All right. Psalm 24. Verse 1 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. That includes even the people who don't want to belong to him. And so when those people who don't belong to Jesus, or who do belong to Jesus but don't want to, it reminds me a lot of like a rebellious child because we're all children of God, right? But this is like a rebellious child who hasn't seen their need for God. And so we can pray for those people. We can pray for them that they would see their need for God, that they would see him as a loving father and themselves as the children of God that they can be. Psalm 25, verse 5 says, Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. You know, we're looking for guidance. This is the best place to look. It's full of truth. This is where we want to go when we are trying to figure out what the next best thing is. We gotta dig into this word and stop looking everywhere else. Dive into the word. And then Psalm 26, he talks, um, this is the last time he says it, but in verse three he says, for I am always aware of your unfailing love and I have lived according to your truth. <clears throat> it's just very cool because in in verse, I'm sorry, in Psalm 25, he said he talks about God's unfailing love over and over again. And David, we talk, we've talked about this before. David has such a, an awareness of God's unfailing love. And it's that focus on that unfailing love that gets him through the really, really hard things. Because he knows that he knows that he knows that God loves him. God sees him and that that love is unfailing, which means he's going to act out of that always. It never goes away. So, Q&E. Number one, thank God 
that he had left you breadcrumbs, left us breadcrumbs to be able to identify who the Messiah is, which is Jesus Christ. And additional, if you want to, read a book like The Case for Christ, where it just it shows you all of those those prophecies about about the Messiah and how Jesus fulfilled every single stinking one. Like, we're not idiots who believe in Jesus. We're not like believing blindly. It's because he fulfilled all these prophecies that we can believe and believe with confidence. That's number one. Thank him. And then if you want to dive into something deeper, then do it. Number two, buy that book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23 by Philip Keller. Or number three, heart check. Who or what is leading you? We talked about you finding your leading and your guidance in truth, which is found here. Where do you turn? First thing, when you have a question or you don't know what to do, what's the first thing you do? For me, I bother everybody around me. And so one of my prayers for myself is that I would pray first. And so maybe that's something you need to do. Who or what is leading you? And then ask God, Lord, I pray that you would be the first person I turn to and I would seek you in your word for guidance. All right, May 9th, Psalm 27 through Psalm 32. And we will talk about that tomorrow. Bye.